Um, hello, I'm Dennis Mazars, and I'm here with uh, Cabling Icon. I've got uh, Patrick McLaughlin and, and Betsy Conroy, who are judges for the contest. Uh, and we have our finalist here, uh, Cliff uh, Parrott, with uh, Globalcom out of Northern Virginia. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations, Cliff. It's, it's good to see that you, you know, first timer in this competition, uh, made it this way, all the way here. Um, we're going to ask you a few questions. And then from there, we're going to let the uh, audience uh, assess and uh, vote for you. Wonderful. So uh, I'm going to start off with the first question, uh, Cliff. And uh, my question is going to be, uh, with the uh, state of the economy, you know, and competition being fierce out there, okay, what, what do you do to uh, help capture business uh, for, for your company? Me personally, I feel as if uh, being the face of the company, uh, being the face of the company, you are the first salesman that can uh, provide new and different ways for uh, the sales guys to add on to our contract. So the first thing that I do when I walk into a customer site is look at myself. Uh, if I have less than full bars, immediately I want to suggest to them a ad system to increase their uh, their ability for their mobile connectivity. Uh, also, I like to look at um, how they're working currently and how we can you know, save money for them and also generate money for us by installing a new system that might work and integrate with our other systems better. Those are some great points from a, an installer. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's CD. Your question? Okay, my question is, um, when you arrive on a job site, um, what is the, so what cabling installation factors and why? Well, I think I heard most of your question. I believe you were asking about, uh, when I first get out of the vehicle, what my comment factors are. Uh, the first thing that I like to do when I get out of the vehicle is uh, verify what we're here to do, um, understand fully uh, what kind of PPE is going to be required, make sure that you have all your safety uh, guidelines set in place, and uh, have a good tight game plan before we get for the customer and then be able to tackle it with uh, one fail suit. Cliff, thanks. Uh, Cliff, in your entry video, you talked about being an installer who worked work in the sky and in the dirt and everywhere in between. And um, the question I'm going to ask you goes a little bit toward um, uh, the question that Dennis asked you as well. Dennis focused on getting new business uh, for your for your organization. My question is more about professionalism, sort of regardless of the environment that you're in, if you're in a, you know, a cherry picker up on a pole somewhere, or you're literally digging in the dirt, uh, laying cable down there somewhere, or as you point out, anywhere in between. What do you do to um, represent the cabling trade itself, the installation trade, as one of uh, professionalism, where I'm sure you realize that some of your customers uh, may have had bad experiences in the past, may view the, the cable puller as uh, the proverbial trunk slammer, wondering what you do to sort of put the best face forward on the trade itself. Very good question. And, uh, Every day we have an opportunity to impress upon the rest of the industry and the rest of the trades that we are a professional and that what we do doesn't matter. Um, so what I try to do, uh, in, front of the in front of the customer, in the dirt or not, um, is, is project the appearance of professionality, which is just you know, a clean, clean guy. Um, you know, I got holes tired of having on your clothes. Um, you are wearing uh, your, uh, your logos on and make sure that you are advertising you know, forward to all your customers. And, and um, building on that would be making sure that you're following the guidelines, you know, get, getting with Bixie and understanding the standards of the practice that we're doing. So if you're your client on telephone poles, then you got to make sure your gashes are in, and you got your cone set out, you're down in the manhole, that you're 
get your tripod man lift up, make sure you're sniffing them holes and um, just sticking to the standards that have been set before us. Um, so from the real beginning of my, uh, my career was that every rule, uh, as far as safety is concerned, has all been written in somebody else's book. Um, so with that being in, set in my mind forever, I will try to think, how can I create a more safe and positive uh, working environment? And I think that doing that creates the the uh, the look of a professional installation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Cliff. Uh, another question is, uh, since this is being the uh, second season of uh, Cabling Icon, uh, what would you give uh, newcomers? in the low-voltage industry, uh, some words of advice. Absolutely. There is, uh, there's a lot of advice to give to uh, you guys coming on. But my, uh, my simple, easy line would be stick to accuracy before neatness, before speed. And as long as you hit your accuracy and you're, you know, you might be slow as molasses, but you're doing it right the first time, then you can work on doing it right the first time and being neat about it and being clean and, and then start focusing on stuff. So accuracy, neatness, and speed are what I would I would suggest to anybody coming into the trade to focus on and then just have that initiative to, to, to go the extra mile. Thank you. You're welcome. Betsy? You're welcome. Um, I was wondering what your career path is and... Um, what you sort of have planned for your future and how you think you're going to get there. Well, my career path has steadily been evolving, uh, to say the least. In the beginning, I just wanted to be the, the termination guy, um, but I've uh, taken a liking to fiber optics and are uh, currently pursuing more credentials and education within the fiber optics. Field. And the end of it all, I plan on running Global Town and Cooking. Good answer. I'll let Brett know. Let Brett know. Yes, yes, ma'am. Please do, please do. I think he is on a uh, course for about three years after he's taken his seat. Thanks a lot, Pat. Cliff, um, Sort of the keys to success, I guess, uh, some of the keys to success are acquiring both skills and knowledge. And you've certainly displayed your skills uh, throughout this competition so far. Uh, I, uh, I don't doubt that you've got a, a significant amount of knowledge behind you as well. My final question goes to that knowledge, uh, uh, sort of down that road of knowledge. How do you um, keep up with the, the, your level of knowledge of changing and emerging technology? Um, what sort of resources or sources do you use to stay up, not just with, you know, what to do with your hands, um, but also, you know, what's happening from a technology standpoint with cabling, wireless, gas systems, as you point out. Uh, so what, what resources do you use to stay up to date on that, and how do you find the time or carve out the time to stay current with that type of technology? Great question, very good question. Uh, well, I'll kind of work backwards. Um, I do not find time to, uh, to get educated. I have to actually get educated. Um, a lot of times, there's a million things going on, like, keeping from doing, you know, what your career will do. Um, so I, I find myself making time, putting putting aside some of the other uh, things that are going on. Um, how I stay in is in contact with all of the uh, companies that I've got certification through already. Uh, I electronic, uh, um, key connectivity, corning. Um, they, they do a pretty good job of keeping me abreast on changing technologies, you know, new systems like PON uh, um, being implemented. And uh, the other one would be just blatantly looking on the internet. Um, you can you can find some pretty amazing stuff out there. Just search, you know, telecommunications. So. Uh, once again, it's the initiative to, to do those things that will keep you uh, in the know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, Cliff, that's uh, that's all the interrogation we're going to do this time. So, uh, hey, I want to I want to thank you, uh, and I'm I'm sure Patrick and Betsy, we all thank you for uh, getting to this point with Caitlin Icon, and um, hopefully uh, from here on out, it's it's up to the audience and their votes. So, uh, everyone out there viewing this, uh, it's it's about your votes in uh, selecting the next Caitlin Icon, and. Uh, we appreciate it again, Cliff, and uh, we look forward to uh, the winner. And, Wonderful. Uh, Thank you guys very much for the opportunity.